it's a new archway. All organic. So this is all under construction. It's about 40% complete. All right, so this is the second Wafati that we have started construction on. Um, people live in here uh, off and on. People come and stay. They come from Airbnb or directly because they're familiar with our website. Um, and um, it keeps the water out. Uh, it's not insulated yet. So um, it, it can get cold, but the amazing thing is, like it was getting to be a warm day outside. Um, I don't know, is, yeah, so, but, but it's a little warmer outside and we come in and do you feel it's already much cooler? Significantly. So um, the thermal mass that surrounds the structure is absorbing the heat from this space and keeping it cool. And when we're done with this structure, we hope that um, we will have created annualized thermal inertia that it will be something so that it doesn't require any heat at all we hope and uh uh so it'll have on two of the walls and then on the roof and of course underneath the building is going to be um, a huge thermal mass and that will fit underneath a, a layer of insulation so it'll it'll keep once it's warmed in the summer We'll be able to use that heat from the summer to heat it through the winter. That's that's the plan. Um, in the meantime, uh, we built a rocket mass heater in here uh, so people could stay warm until the building is complete. Um, this one is the one that's featured in Ernie Erica's new book, The Rocket Mass Heater Builder's Guide. Um, I think that uh, this, one of the things that we did with this particular build is we wanted the world's most boring build. Something that's very basic, very simple, uh, to be able to demonstrate how to properly build a rocket mass heater. And so this is it. This is the basics. This is a simple build and it's holding up very well. It's doing an amazing job. It's. This, this uh, rocket mass heater has heated this building for two winters now. It's about to start on its third winter. Okay, dumb basic question. Did you use stove, I'm assuming stove paint on there? Because the normal stuff on the drum will burn off. No. I was last year about a week ago, and I was surprised to see that this was black. And and one way is the stove paint, but I have I seriously frown on the use of paint. And so um, the other way would be to get a fire going in it, and then you oil it, and then it, it will blacken like a cast iron skillet. And how many square feet is it, Paul? I think it's 900 square feet. It feels so much bigger than that. So it's 900 square feet, so it still kind of count as a, at least a small house, if not a tiny house. Right, I don't think this qualifies as a tiny house. This would definitely be a small. <clears throat> you got a little bit of food in here behind the wall. So this is like a little food storage, water storage. So this is our first attempt. This is a 400 square foot building. Um, so the, this first wall, well, both of the uh, standard walls were replaced with straw bale. And this one, the, the cob work needs to be completed on the, uh, on the straw bale. And so it looks really lumpy. And later we'll get uh, we'll get it to look much nicer. Um, so we call this Allerton Abbey now. Um, when we first started building it, we called it um, Wafati 0.7. Um, this structure is probably about 90% complete. It has its umbrella. Um, 
we wanted to be able to test the annualized thermal inertia this winter, but uh, that requires that we have somebody living in it through the summer and that all of the cob work is done. The cob work isn't done yet. And so there are little points where um, air still gets through. And so then that doesn't make for a good test. Um, it's beginning to look like we won't get somebody to finish it this year at all. Um, and so, damn. Uh, we tried doing some fundraisers um, about two months ago and we didn't get enough raised. So uh, maybe, uh, maybe next year. Right. And then we'll be able to do the annualized thermal inertia. If, I mean, currently, uh, we'll see in a moment, we'll go inside and have a look around. I, I think it's a really pretty little structure. And uh, we have had some people renting it uh, and staying here for a bit. What I really love is to find like, like the ultimate would be a couple that would come and uh, finish the cob work and uh, stay in it uh, all year, uh, rent free, um, and then uh, be able to thoroughly measure, uh, you know, the whole thermal inertia stuff. Yeah. And it's already set up inside with some with the rocket mass heater so that they would, you know, what they need is already built into it. It's just that it needs finished. Well, let's suppose that it was finished. Then what you would need is uh, somebody who would live in it through a summer. And then uh, what would happen is, is that by opening and closing the windows the right amount, then, which would be just like whenever you feel too warm, you and it's you know the whenever the temperature outside is more comfortable than the temperature inside you would open a window um kind of a thing uh, mm -hmm. and so what that will do is it'll use the heat from the summer to charge the mass and uh then uh have them stay through the fall the winter and the spring in theory what's going to happen is that um it'll stay warm all winter long you know when it's 20 below outside, then you're not going to leave the door open. You'll have the door closed and you'll have the windows closed. And the thermal inertia from last summer will heat the inside. It'll continue to exude heat for many, many months. So we need a proper test. And I don't want somebody who's just going to like stay in it. Right. I want somebody who's going to be living in it. Yeah. I want somebody who's going to be cooking three meals a day inside. Um, and I want there to be at least two people. And so at least a couple. I, I kind of want to be able to, to at least have this one test be something where, okay, there's some people that are cooking, which is adding some heat. And then there's some people that are living in it, which is adding some heat. And so then, because it's all about balance. And so where do we end up? How cold does it get? Now, in the meantime, right now, uh, there was a rocket mass heater that was built, but the person that built it uh, had a lot of clever ideas mm -hmm. and the system did not work well. It had a variety of problems. Um, and so then uh, one of our innovators uh, from last year's innovators event came up here and modified it to be a rocket heater, not a rocket mass heater. So it took out, bypassed the mass and then routed a vertical exhaust right next to the barrel. And so now you've got something that will heat the air really well. But the house itself has a mass. Right. So it, this is a, a different thing that should work well. In fact, at one point in time last winter, some people came in with the rocket heater and um, they built a bunch of fires every day. And it took them five days until they could get the temperature up to, I think they were shooting for 80 inside um and so the thing is they would build this really hot fire but it would never really get warm inside right because the walls are absorbing all that heat right you're charging the thermal inertia and so that was a fascinating thing so it's we're really hopeful that this system is going to work and work well but i mean we need to do a proper test with people right. living in the structure through the summer and through the winter and so once you heated it to 80, did it stay warm for a little while in there or did it just keep sucking the heat out? It did stay warm for a little while. But again, um, 
air was just moving through the, the structure. Right. And so, I mean, to get it to be at 80 degrees while air is moving through the structure is still it's tricky. relatively profound. Right. But, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully the whole structure will be finished. It would, I would, <laughs> it would be fantastic if a couple showed up and, and said that they would finish the work and stay here for, you know, 365 days or mm -hmm. something. Um, I would love to work out an arrangement with a couple right. like that. Well, and and it's getting to be too late in the year to be able to finish any cob on the outside, isn't it? It, would, would, it wouldn't have time to, to dry, correct? Well, true. I mean, I think I I think that uh, um, yeah, there would be there would be a lot of work to be done on the outside. I mean, if you did cob on the outside. Um, I think right now you could be okay. Like like right now, I don't think we're going to have a frost for probably a week at least. And so like if they showed up right now and put in and started cobbing on the outside, I think that they'd be okay. But when frost hits, that's if your cob isn't dry yet, that's going right. to just eat your cob. And you do want somebody that's coming to have listened to your podcast enough and seen enough of your videos that they really understand how to do it. I won't let somebody live here unless they've listened to at least 200 of my podcasts right. which is going to be a very rare person i think right um otherwise i just don't think that they're going to have the same value set i mean for any of the residents that we have here is there a critter yeah uh-huh for any of the residents um that's a requirement that we have and it would be unfair to the other residents right you know to not have that same requirement but i mean i don't know you're free rent and to be the first person, you know, to, to travel in a Wafati, I don't know. I, I think it's more than a fair deal to say you have to listen to 200 podcasts. Right. That that's the price. Well, and it would shorten your time. It would shorten your learning curve because then you'd understand how to do it correctly. You could kind of stand on the shoulders of the people who've already done it. I mean, you've done enough experimenting that if somebody didn't take what information you already have and they started to try from ground zero, they'd lose a lot of work and a lot of hours to making it the wrong way. 